Can a single accident shake an entire global industry? The crash of flight AI-171 not only stunned the world, but also raised pressing questions about safety, transparency, and accountability in modern aviation. In a field often regarded as the gold standard of precision and risk control, how could such a catastrophic failure still occur? This tragedy goes beyond a mere technical fault. It marks a turning point that compels the entire industry to re-examine what was once considered guaranteed. From cockpit technology and crew training to investigative procedures and crisis management, AI-171 may become the catalyst for the most sweeping reforms aviation has seen in decades. The AI-171 disaster has triggered a worldwide reckoning across aviation safety frameworks. Unlike previous accidents that often stemmed from design flaws or mechanical failures, this tragedy has turned the spotlight toward human factors and operational compliance, historically overlooked amid rapid expansion. In India, where the accident occurred, the Directorate General of Civil Aviation launched a sweeping nationwide inspection. Preliminary findings revealed widespread violations, recurring maintenance lapses, worn tires beyond allowable limits, and flight simulators that did not match actual cockpit configurations. Several training centers were found using outdated software, and some airlines continued operations despite repeated technical faults. The DGCA issued a seven-day ultimatum for corrective action and committed to intensified random audits. Urban zoning around airports also came under renewed scrutiny. The AI-171 aircraft crashed into a high-rise dormitory that had exceeded height restrictions, yet remained untouched by enforcement. This failure underscored systemic weaknesses in obstacle management and land use control. The Indian government has since proposed legislation granting aviation authorities the power to forcibly remove illegal structures near flight paths, a move that could set an important precedent for fast urbanizing nations. Globally, ICAO, the FAA, and EASA are closely monitoring India's investigation. Should violations of ICAO standards be confirmed, India risks being downgraded in global aviation safety rankings. Such a downgrade could restrict its airlines from opening new routes to the US and Europe, trigger enhanced foreign oversight, and damage the country's aviation brand on the international stage. Major international airlines have also taken initiative. Some carriers have launched internal reviews of their Boeing 787 fuel switch systems and pilot training programs, even in the absence of regulatory mandates. These actions reflect growing awareness that accountability must precede obligation. Looking ahead, the global aviation industry is expected to enter a new cycle of regulatory tightening, stricter maintenance protocols, upgraded obstacle databases, standardized cockpit designs, and enhanced surveillance of operational personnel. The AI-171 crash is not just another accident. It is a wake-up call that safety is never optional, and that one weak link can collapse the entire system. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner, once celebrated as the pinnacle of next-generation aviation, has now become a focal point in the debate over trust in automation. During the AI-171 disaster, all automated systems functioned as designed, the emergency turbine deployed, the engines attempted auto-relight, and black box data was recorded properly. Yet none of that could save the aircraft, because the dual-engine shutdown occurred too low and too early. What truly shocked investigators was that both fuel control switches were found in the off position just seconds after takeoff. These switches are designed with protective locks and are not easy to activate by accident. This raises serious considerations about intentional action or critical human error, scenarios that automated systems were never programmed to handle. In response, two technological paths are now being explored. First, enhancing physical safeguards in the cockpit, dual lock mechanisms, confirmation protocols, warning lights, or altitude-based command restrictions. Second, integrating AI to monitor pilot inputs in real time, allowing early detection of abnormal behavior and automated alerts to ground control. 
While AI cannot replace human judgment, it can serve as a digital co-pilot, adding a critical layer of situational awareness. The AI-171 crash has also reignited debate over cockpit cameras. Once strongly opposed by pilot unions due to privacy concerns, the global conversation is shifting. International organizations now advocate for encrypted cockpit video systems that can support investigations, ensure procedural compliance, and deter extreme actions. These systems, if properly safeguarded, could bridge a long-standing gap in flight data transparency. In sum, the crash of AI-171 marks a technological crossroads, not in the failure of machines, but in their current limitations to anticipate and override the unpredictable. Going forward, the challenge will not be building smarter systems, but ensuring those systems are prepared to intervene when human reliability falters. Although the official cause of the AI-171 crash has not been confirmed, cockpit actions, whether accidental or intentional, have exposed major deficiencies in current training systems. Most existing simulator programs focus on single-engine failures. The simultaneous loss of both engines immediately after takeoff is an extremely rare scenario and one that has rarely been rehearsed. That is changing now. Airlines are urgently incorporating this situation into their simulation training. Experts also emphasize the need to reinforce crew resource management, particularly under high-stress scenarios. The AI-171 cockpit voice recordings reveal confusion and a lack of coordination, suggesting the communication culture between captain and first officer needs improvement, especially when pairing younger, less experienced pilots with senior crew. Pilot mental health has also become a critical issue. If intentional action is ultimately confirmed, global aviation authorities will be forced to implement tighter screening and continuous monitoring of pilots' psychological well-being. Programs for mental health support, regular psychological evaluations, and training pilots to identify signs of instability in their peers will need to be expanded significantly. On the ground, the maintenance violations exposed after the crash highlighted systemic gaps in technical competence and oversight. Maintenance engineers, air traffic controllers, and ground personnel will require more rigorous training protocols, including randomized inspections to ensure real-world compliance and procedural integrity. Immediately following the AI-171 tragedy, ICAO activated its International Investigation Protocol under Annex 13, the Global Framework for Aircraft Accident Inquiries. Under this mechanism, the country where the crash occurs leads the investigation, while other relevant states, including the aircraft's country of manufacture, engine origin, countries with deceased passengers, and the airline's country of registry are entitled to send technical experts. India led the investigation into the AI-171 crash. The United States participated officially because it was responsible for manufacturing both the airframe and the engines. The United Kingdom was involved as many of the passengers held British citizenship. Boeing, as the aircraft manufacturer, also contributed to the investigation. All parties contributed critical data and technical expertise to support the inquiry. India's Aircraft Investigation Bureau released its preliminary report just 30 days after the crash, exactly in line with ICAO's recommendations. The report offered a high degree of transparency, disclosing core data points such as the fuel switch positions, engine states, altitude, speed, communication logs, and partial cockpit voice recordings. This transparency helped suppress speculation and reinforced international trust in the process. Many observers deemed it one of the most efficient and professionally handled investigations of the past decade. Boeing and General Electric, responsible for the aircraft and engine respectively, immediately formed dedicated technical teams to inspect similar systems globally. Concurrently, major 787 operators including ANA, British Airways, Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, and United Airlines initiated internal reviews of cockpit procedures, switch interface designs, and engine startup protocols. Notably, several airlines proactively updated pilot guidance materials and conducted refresher training even before any official directive was issued. 
This synchronized response from manufacturers, carriers, and regulators exemplifies the cross-border responsibility that defines aviation safety. Flight safety is no longer the burden of a single country, it is a global mandate. This principle is what has allowed aviation to remain the world's safest mode of transport despite decades of exponential growth. While the investigation continues, the International Air Transport Association issued a public appeal urging media and the public to refrain from premature speculation. IATA also emphasized that despite the shock of AI-171, aviation remains statistically the safest industry, with a fatal accident rate standing at roughly 1 in 6 million flights. From a professional standpoint, both national and international pilot associations, including the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations, have called for the legal rights of the crew to be protected until the investigation concludes. These organizations are also pressing for due process and caution against drawing conclusions under public or political pressure. Overall, the international community's response to AI-171 has demonstrated a high degree of speed, transparency, and constructive alignment. It is not only a textbook example of crisis response, but a case study in how the industry learns, adapts, and collectively raises the bar to prevent similar tragedies. Following the accident, passenger confidence experienced a noticeable dip. In India, load factors on several Air India flights dropped in the short term. On international forums, travelers expressed hesitation when booking with carriers from countries perceived to have weaker safety oversight. However, analysts believe this decline is temporary. If the investigation remains transparent, its recommendations are fully implemented and the airline takes visible corrective action, trust is likely to recover. A significant shift is already visible. Today's travelers are more proactive in researching aircraft type, airline safety records, and operational history rather than simply choosing based on ticket price. Air India, the operator of flight AI-171, has published inspection results for its 787 and 737 fleets and pledged to implement all safety recommendations. Still, rebuilding brand credibility will require sustained effort, strategic communications, and long-term commitment to restoring public trust. Ultimately, the true test will lie not in short-term recovery of load factors, but in whether Air India and the broader Indian aviation ecosystem can evolve into a model of trust, rigor, and resilience in the eyes of both domestic and international travelers. In a post-crisis landscape, safety is no longer assumed it must be continuously earned. The AI-171 disaster ignited an intense communications crisis in its immediate aftermath. Within hours of the crash, false reports including a fabricated cause of the accident began circulating rapidly on social media. Air India and the Indian government were forced to issue immediate denials to quash the misinformation. Air India's communication strategy was anchored on three principles – transparency, empathy, and consistency. The airline provided timely updates, held press briefings, cooperated closely with investigators, and extended support to victims' families. Analysts have noted that this approach helped limit long-term reputational damage. One of the most significant takeaways from the incident is the growing importance of digital media and misinformation control in the age of social networks. In response, major airlines are now investing heavily in digital communication teams and establishing rapid response media units to manage potential crises in real time. As aviation history has repeatedly shown, major tragedies are often followed by waves of safety innovation. Following the AI-171 crash, engineers, regulators, and global aviation bodies have mobilized around a series of high-priority research initiatives. Chief among them is the redesign of cockpit interfaces, especially the human-machine interface, to prevent unintentional or deliberate errors by flight crews. At the same time, advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence are being explored for real-time behavioral monitoring of pilots and automated flight data analysis, with the goal of detecting anomalies before they escalate into emergencies. 
Another development under consideration is the deployment of live data streaming from black boxes directly to ground control centers, enabling faster investigation and potential real-time intervention. The reintroduction of cockpit video systems equipped with strong encryption and access controls is also gaining renewed support, not just for post-incident analysis but for internal oversight and cockpit discipline. In parallel, manufacturers are accelerating research into technologies that improve passenger survivability in the event of a crash, including energy-absorbing cabin structures, directional airbags, next-generation seat belts, and crash-optimized seating. On a policy level, several countries and airlines are now contemplating the creation of dedicated R&D safety funds. These would be modeled after those established in the wake of the German Wings and Air France 447 disasters. These funds represent a necessary step toward ensuring that the lessons of AI-171 extend beyond crisis response and are converted into long-term transformations in aviation risk governance. The crash of AI-171 was not just a tragedy, it was a moment of reckoning for the entire aviation industry. No longer can the sector rely solely on historical safety records or hide behind layers of advanced technology. It must confront a fundamental truth. No matter how sophisticated the systems, disasters can still occur if the human element is not adequately protected, trained and monitored. From control towers to cockpits, from regulatory frameworks to public communications, every link in the aviation chain is now under renewed scrutiny. A quiet reform has begun. The loss of life can never be undone. But the safety improvements underway, the tightening of accountability and the recovery of passenger trust now taking shape, each serve as a lasting tribute to those who were lost. This is not the end. It is the beginning of a new Chapter 1 where aviation does not merely soar higher but flies safer than ever before.